Tech Legends, I hope you're all fantastic. Today, we're going to pair up the ASM Hydra Synth with the Fractal Audio Axe FX3. The first video I did with the Hydra, I got loads of questions asking me to run it through the Axe FX. So this is my first attempt at doing that particular video. The Hydra has some great built-in effects in there, but as we all know, the Axe FX has some absolutely stellar modulation, delay, and reverb effects in there. So I really just want to kind of showcase some of those. And I think the two units are similar in a lot of respects, mainly that they are very deep machines. You can just kind of click a few things and go through presets and get some great sounds. But if you really like crafting custom tones and you like playing around with sound design, I think they complement one another really, really well. So consider this the first of what will hopefully be many parts of me playing these two amazing machines together. Let's get into it. I'm using the stereo outs of the Hydra into input two of the Axe FX3. I've placed the corresponding input two block on the grid and I've connected it to output number one. This is the patch that I'm using. The filters are wide open and there's no built-in effects from the Hydra. So just a lovely fat analog style sound there. I do want to warm it up a little bit more and add some grit. So I'm going to use a little bit of saturation from the axe. To do that, I'm going to use a cab block, but I'm not going to use any cabinet impulse response. As you can see here, I've set the cab input mode to stereo and I've selected a pair of the totally flat IRs in there and just pan them hard left and hard right. So they're not doing anything, but the fun stuff is in the preamp tab. I can come in here and select something like say the vintage preamp. Let's use it in high quality mode and let's add a bit of drive and a bit of saturation on there. We get this. I might just turn the saturation and the drive up a little bit more. I like that, that's adding some wonderful character in there. Now, most of the time, if you're playing synth, you're probably gonna be using the built-in synth filters to shape your sound, but we do have filters in the Axe FX as well. Let's load up a filter block in here. Uh, the most basic thing we could do is select a low pass filter, use the Q control or the resonance if you're looking at your synth. We'll do that and you know we can bring the frequency up just to kind of take a bit of the heat out of the high end. But I want this thing to move. There is a built-in LFO in here, which we can enable, which is pretty fun. I can set the modulation frequency down here and I can set the rate. So if I just want a very slow, consistent sweep, I can do this. Alternatively, what I could do, let's try this on a different channel. We'll copy channel A to channel B to get started. Uh, let's leave that built-in LFO on, but we'll set it to be a random LFO and we'll crank the rate right up. I'll set the mod frequency a little bit lower and the main frequency a bit higher. This one's really, really fun for chords. <laughs> Really, really cool. So I've got those two filters on different channels. Uh, let's just kind of stick with this nice slow moving one right here. And I might bring the maximum frequency on that one up a little bit. Okay, so we have this nice LFO controlled filter. We've got some saturation. Let's make this sound a little bit wider and we can use some modulation effects to do that, like a chorus, uh, the dimension chorus I really like for this style thing. Just dimension two straight up sounds great. Beautiful. Or we could use something like the quad chorus in the multi-tap delay. This is actually my favorite one in here. So let's do that. This one sounds amazingly rich and fat. Let's disable that filter for a sec, just so we can hear it on uh, kind of the raw synth. That sounds amazing. Uh, let's roll with that. Let's add some reverb to this now. So many great reverbs in here. I really like the halls on these sort of synth sounds in particular, something like the chorus hall is 
amazing. You can crank it right up on this. Let's have a listen. Beautiful. Let's try on another channel. We could try something a little more old school, like maybe the London plate reverb on there, just for something a bit more subtle. It's a bit of a darker sounding verb on there, or we could use one of the new shimmer style verbs on there, like say the Ursa Major, cranking this one up is amazing. And we do need to hear this with uh, a less kind of harmonically rich sound, like just some signs or something. This kind of gives you instant Brian Eno vibes. We'll turn the filter on as well. Another fun thing to do with like a road style sound, which I've got here at the moment, I'll turn the built-in effects off again on that one, is to you know add a phaser or something like that, a very classic effect. So I've still got the saturation on, I've got the London plate reverb. Let's just add a phaser to this. I really just like the kind of stock, uh, you know, script 90 with the rate up a little bit. A rotary speaker is another great choice. Just the stock rotary settings sound great, I think. Of course, combine that with something like a drive pedal, which is really, really fun. Like, you know, just a Tube Screamer or an SD-1 just to get some real kind of nastiness out of it. Let's even use the Maxoff 808 on there. And of course,
course, we can't talk about this without talking about beloved pitch detune. I'm going to sub this rotary out for the dual detune in here. I'll just kind of give it maybe nine or 10 cents on either side. Doesn't matter if it's symmetric, really. Uh, let's set the input mode to stereo on there. And I pan them hard left and hard right. Let's just add that. This will make it sound nice and wide. And I'll leave it on. Uh, let's go back to the chorus hall. That's kind of fun. So this is using like a Juno inspired arpeggiator patch. Let's have a listen to that. Lots of fun stuff to be had when you're using the synth with an Axe FX3. I feel like I barely kind of scratched the surface with this. Obviously, there are multiple instances of blocks like reverb and the multi-tap delay and the pitch block in there where you can just really not only get into the different effect types, but also kind of creative routings in there, which I didn't really do. I will do a video like that if people want to hear it. So let me know in the comment section if you want me to uh, really delve into some kind of more out there routings or different sounds. I mean, we just kind of stuck to some relatively safe stuff on here to get started. But I really hope you all enjoyed the video. I hope it gives you an idea of you know, just how fantastic the effects in the Axe FX3 work on synthesizers, as well as I think how appropriate they are no matter what your kind of taste is, you know, I tend to gravitate towards more the like late 70s, early 80s style synth sounds in there because I love, you know, old prog rock and I love those warm sounds in there. But I also really like, you know, kind of glitchy, filtery stuff as well. And the Hydra does a bunch of those sounds really, really well. And combining it with some of the dirty stuff in the axe is a whole bunch of fun. Like I said, if you want to hear and see some more videos with this synth with the Axe FX3, let me know in the comments. Uh, the usual links to support the channel are in the video description. And I'll play you all out with, uh, actually, I'm going to do this. I'm going to add the pitch crystals in here. Actually, I have a, I don't have something in there for that, but I'm going to create very quickly a crystal echoes patch in here. Let's go an octave up and an octave down. And let's hard pan these and let's bring the mix up and let's just play you all out with this kind of Blade Runner soul patch with pitch crystals and a shimmer reverb and the filter thing on there. This is so much fun. Thank you so much for putting up with me trying to play keyboards. I will see you all next time.